This is a second generation Range Rover Evoque. Now, if you're thinking about buying one of these, I urge you, please, please, please watch this video because we're gonna show you all the common problems, show you everything that tends to go wrong. And on top of that, we're gonna talk about why this very car has been rejected and handed back due to unreliability. Brace yourselves, let's go. Now if it was petrol you were after, there were the choice of three 2 litre petrol engines. Here they are here with the respective power outputs and also you had the option of that plug-in hybrid as well. That was a 1.5 and there was a few problems to make you aware of there. We'll come on to that though, don't worry. So on the diesels, a common question that is often asked is do the Ingenium engines in these have the same problem that the old diesels used to, wherein the time and chain and tensioner had problems? Now I'm glad to say they don't. If you've got a 2019 onwards Evoque, it got all the revised equipment in the time and chain, including the thicker chain itself and the tensioner. So that problem is resigned to the past. There are, however, quite a few problems that are well known on these engines, unfortunately. The turbos being one of them, so be well on the lookout for any blue smoke when you get the car you're looking at on a test drive and also when it first starts. Now, if you are unlucky enough to have to replace the turbo, you're looking anywhere between £1,600 and £2,000, just depending on where you go and exactly what needs replaced. So if you're buying a second generation Evoque, they all are fitted with the Selective Catalyst Reduction System. Now that's a fancy way of saying, basically they use AdBlue, which is injected to try and reduce harmful emissions. Now the system itself tends to be okay, the problem tends to occur if a willing owner has tried to top it up themselves. Quite often if they've been overfilled, it can damage some of the really quite expensive sensors in there, and even just diagnosing this system can get pricey as well. So as with pretty much every modern diesel engine, it's got a few systems in place to try and reduce the harmful emissions. First one being a DPF. Now this is fairly common. It's not resigned just to the Evokes as having problems. We see this on all types of cars. But the DPF or diesel particulate filter can tend to clog up, particularly if the car has been used for a lot of short journeys and it's not able to do a regeneration. Again, thankfully that's going to put a light on, a message on the dash, so it'd be very hard for a seller to cover up. The other thing worth mentioning, it kind of goes hand in hand with this, is the EGR valve, the exhaust gas recirculation valve. Again, they can tend to get clogged up if the car's used on a lot of short journeys. Again though, thankfully, puts a light on the dash. So unfortunately, there is quite a serious problem with these Evokes in general. Now this very car has suffered this problem, and if you have a look on forums or speak to other owners, you may find they've experienced it as well. So what happens is you're coming up to a set of lights, you're coming to a stop, the car starts to down change abruptly, according to some owners, and then once you come to a stop, it appears on the dash with a little message saying select gear to maneuver. Now at that point the car won't set off, you need to turn it fully off, fully back on, then reselect the gear. Now obviously that goes beyond just being inconvenient, it's downright dangerous as one owner had told us about when they had a truck approaching them from the rear. The truck was obviously expecting them to set off, but they couldn't. Now unfortunately as well, Land Rover do seem to be issuing updates to try and resolve this problem, but none of them have done it as of yet. So another fairly serious problem with the plug-in hybrid version of the Evoque is its inability to switch over and actually use the electricity. Now the way the owners report this one is the car tends to set off using the electricity, but by the time it hits 15, 20 miles an hour, it's reverted back to using the engine. Now it doesn't matter if you're in hybrid mode, doesn't matter if you're in full EV mode, it's impossible to get the car to try and use the electricity. And rightly so, a lot of owners are saying, what's the point in purchasing an EV to save money on fuel if it doesn't use the electricity? So double check on the car that you're looking at, if it is a plug-in hybrid, that it does stay in electric mode. If you find it switching over at 15 miles an hour, that's a problem that Land Rover seem to be having trouble resolving. That's a good outtake. <laughs> <laughs> So unfortunately, on account of those two problems that we've just spoken about, this very car is being rejected and handed back as we speak. Although the owner absolutely loves the car, they found it just too unreliable. Now, 
in their experience, trying to hand the car back has been a little bit troublesome as well. They've found that Land Rover service has been tricky to deal with. I don't know if you've maybe had a similar experience. If you have, you can drop it in the comments below. But Land Rover Finance, on the other hand, they've been brilliant with this particular owner and they've refunded the car minus 45 pence for every mile that the car has covered. The owner's happy with that and they're going to move on to a new car. Now I'm not for one minute saying this is going to happen to every single Evoque, but critically it's not just this one. You can see the forums are full of it, we've heard from other owners as well, so it's certainly a known problem. Now hopefully as time goes on, Land Rover are able to bring out updates and resolve some of these problems, but the best we can do for now is just make you aware of them. And that's what this channel is all about, showing you what you need to know. So if you tend to buy second-hand cars, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And also, if you're getting value from this, please do hit that like button as well. That's how other prospective Evoke buyers can find this and get the same value that you're getting. So here are a couple more problems if you've chosen to keep watching and continue with your Evoke purchase after that. It seems so trivial now, but it's our job to let you know these things. So one thing to be aware of, particularly if you live in a hotter climate, the black sections of paint, now these seem to delaminate and you end up getting the lacquer coming off of it. It's really obvious looking, but that's what's happening. Usually it tends to relate to sun. One thing to be aware of is they may well have already been repainted. So have a look at them and make sure it's been a decent job that's been done. Now, unfortunately, the Evokes use the same door handle as is common throughout the Jaguar Land Rover range. Why, unfortunately? Well, these have got a common reputation of going wrong. So what happens is, more often than not, one or two of the doors will choose not to lock. So it looks like the car's locked, it flashes the lights, but the door remains unlocked. So double check, it's not the case on the one that you're buying. Now, these are also a sealed unit. We can open them up and replace components individually. So you're buying a whole unit, which isn't cheap. So hopping into this interior, this really rather wonderful interior, and that is the real shame. The choice of materials, the general quality in here really is very nice. It's just a shame that we don't have the reliability to go along with it. But hey ho, what tends to go wrong in here? Well, this top screen, it's gonna be hard for you to miss if you test drive the car you're looking at, but this can tend to flicker. Again, Land Rover are taking them back. They're doing update after update, but nothing seems to resolve it. Could be a hardware issue, who knows? Now, the only other thing to mention before we get this out in a drive and hopefully find some positive points because this has been a bit grim, the only other thing to mention is the lack of sound in here. This is another little electrical gremlin that these can suffer from, wherein you get no sound, so no radio, no Apple CarPlay, no telephone calls, no nothing for 15 or 20 minutes, then it seems to correct itself. Again, another little electrical gremlin, so on that test drive, maybe even try calling someone, but at very least, have the radio on, playing some tunes. Ah, we're off. Oh, right, so it, it really pulls. That's how I caught it there. All wheel drive as well. Aye. So traction's Aye. brilliant. Traction's excellent. Give it a go around the back roads a wee bit because you'll see, you'll just feel how nice this is to drive and how comfortable, how, how solid it feels in the road. All right, I'd say there's absolutely no creaks or rattles or anything in here. There's nothing. Right. Aye, like pushing like you can push a dash here, creaks and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm I don't sure. quite know what this material is. It's a bit unusual, isn't it? It's kind of this one. It's quite. It's like, it's nice, yeah. but it's, it's unusual. It'd be faster than a lot of stuff on the road, wouldn't it? Aye. No, it's good. Especially three of us in here. Very quiet. Barely wind noise. Barely any tyre noise. Quality wise, it's just really, really nice. Nice car. It should really be for that car, by the way. It's just a pity. It really is. It's a shame. So it goes with it saying then you guys would be keeping this if it was oh, 100%. didn't have the reliability problems. Yeah. She fell out of she wanted a dream car, she got it and she fell out of it. And don't meet your heroes. Aye, don't meet your heroes. That's why I've not bought my my Lambo yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel really quality. Seats are comfortable oh, as well, aren't they? Good, eh? Seats are great. I mean, all the cars I've driven in the past 10, 15, 20 cars over the years, I, this is the one I wouldn't mind taking a long drive. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, you're doing 70, 80, it feels like you're doing uh, 40, 50. Yeah. Just one of those cars. Yeah. It's interesting because you can see these sold like wildfire right through the first generation's yep. years. 
and you can see why people test drive these, you go, I'm going to buy this. Yeah. And now you can see the second, uh, the first generation's sell, selling for the like 9,000 now, 10,000. Yeah. yeah. They depreciate quite badly. The sales figures have dropped off quite steeply. You wonder how much of that is down to people caught in on it. They are a wee bit unreliable. Yeah. Even the Range Rover Sports as well, they're terrible. Well, people buy it for the brand. It really goes. It does, yeah. And I think the deceptive thing is, it's, it's going quicker than you think it is as Absolutely. well. Oh, hi Cody. Cody <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's lovely. It is really nice. It makes it more of a shame. It does, because I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't actually say I wouldn't buy a Range Rover. It's so weird, even though I've got issues with this. I would still like to think, and I would maybe buy a Sport or something in the future. But it's hard. It's hard to think you would buy something when you think that all their other reliability issues, and obviously insurance. Yeah. P people won't want to insure a Range Rovers anymore. You can't insure them money. in London full stop. Yeah, full apparently. stop. I said. You know what I mean. So maybe that's the kind of conclusion to it then is that buy them yes because they are great, but go in with your eyes open. Know yeah. what you're. Know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. Yeah. So the second generation of Oak then, how do we score it on a reliability leaderboard? Well, it's never gonna bode well, is it? After what we went through uh, covering the problems, it's really unfortunate because what a car to travel in. As I mentioned, the choice of materials, the general quality is really, really good. It's just such a shame it doesn't have the reliability to go along with it. So overall, we award it 4.5 out of 10, hopefully. As time goes by, Land Rover will figure out how to fix some of these problems with software updates. But for now, the best we can do is make you aware. Please do hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, and we'll see you next time.